We all want to learn how to create more opportunities for home ownership. Well, Freddie Mac's Equitably Speaking podcast does just that by teaching mortgage professionals like you how to expand their business by closing more loans for minority borrowers and underserved communities. I actually had the opportunity to be a guest on the inaugural episode, Breaking Into Underserved Markets, alongside Vice President of Single Family Equitable Housing at Freddie Mac, Pam Perry. The second episode of Equitably Speaking, Creating a Sustainable Book of Business and Underserved Markets, features Single Family Affordable Lending Manager at Freddie Mac, Monda Webb, and the author and financial coach, Dr. Lynn Richardson. They share knowledge on what it takes to create a sustainable book of business and underserved markets. Equitably Speaking podcasts will be releasing episodes every other week, so make sure to tune in wherever you listen to podcasts to learn how you can expand your business, close more loans, and help close the homeownership gap for borrowers in underserved communities. Welcome to the Mortgage Marketing Expert Podcast, where expert guests teach you how to have success in the mortgage and real estate industry. Here's your host, Phil Treadwell. Welcome back to the Mortgage Marketing Expert Podcast. I am your host, Phil Treadwell. Happy 2024. This is a uh, impromptu episode. I didn't plan on recording this episode, but shout out to my buddy, Jimmy Ryan. We were trading some Instagram DMs earlier this morning, and I got inspired just thinking on a couple different topics, both that he and I were talking about, as well as some things that were going through my head this morning. So I decided to record this quick solo episode because I think there's some important things and trends that we definitely need to be paying attention to. I think a lot of times as mortgage professionals, we tend to fool ourselves. I've shared before that I had a mentor that said the 11th commandment is thou shalt not fooleth thyselfeth. And all that really means is that don't fool yourself into believing something's true when it's not true. And in the mortgage industry, we tend to fool ourselves a lot. We believe that certain things are important, and we think there's this magic strategy we need to do to win. We convince ourselves that there are outside influences keeping us from achieving our goals, but we've got to rethink some things. I'm finishing up a chapter that I'm contributing to my good buddy Kyle Draper's book, Rethink Everything, and he put one out, Rethink Everything That We Think We Know About Social Media, and the second volume is going to be Rethink Everything We Think We Know About Being a Mortgage Professional. And I've had the opportunity to write a chapter for this book, and it's brought up a lot of things, and I want to share a few of those things with you today. One of the first things that I think it's important for us to realize is that there's a a pretty big divide within the mortgage industry, and it's not channel conflict. A lot of times we think it's about being a mortgage banker or a mortgage broker, and that's not the case. I think the divide is the old school and the new school. We have this group of old school professionals who've been doing it a long time. And understand what it takes to build a successful business, some of those success principles and disciplines and work ethic. And then we have a new school group that understands what's relevant, what's modern, how to use social media and content, and the way consumer behavior interacts with a lot of different verticals in and out of the mortgage industry. What I think is interesting is that both of these groups are wildly underestimating the other side. The new school groups like, hey, we understand consumer behavior. We understand how to connect with people on social media. We understand content. But they've got to learn some of the old school success principles about discipline and about work ethic and how they need to grind to get what they want. It's not always about feeling good. It's not always about being excited in the moment. Sometimes you just have to push yourself. You've got to hear things that you don't want to hear so that you get the results that you do want to get. And the old school group needs to take those disciplines, those success principles, and learn to apply them in a more modern and relevant way. And like I said, both sides are underestimating what the other one brings to the table. And I think the people that are going to be extremely successful, not just in 2024, but in the years to come, are going to be able to combine both of those things. I do think you can teach old dog new tricks. I've got clients right now that are maybe closer to the twilight of their career or have been doing it a long time that are hungry and excited about learning some new things. And we have younger professionals, people that are newer in the business or just younger in age that are excited about gaining the discipline and learning about some of these principles from people who have been really, really successful in the business. But for every one of the people that are on both sides trying to embrace the other, there's a lot of people that have tunnel vision. 
They're lying to themselves. They're fooling themselves. They've convinced themselves that it's not because of what they're doing. It's all these outside influences and that there is this magic strategy that if they can just dial in, that's what's going to make them successful. And guys, you can only get better at things you're actually doing. There's never a situation where doing nothing is better than doing something even if you fail. If you do nothing, you get nothing. If you do something, you've got an opportunity to get a win and get results, or maybe you don't get results and you take a loss, but now you have an opportunity to learn something that's going to help you. But a lot of times, it's about getting our mind right as much as it is about the tactics and understanding that just because we're not getting results doesn't mean we need to change anything. We can continue to improve on that thing, but we don't necessarily need to pivot and go in a different direction. Sometimes the most valuable thing we can do is just stick with it. I've shared many times before that success is about consistent and persistent effort over time. That success, meeting that goal, achieving that goal, is about staying consistent. We all know what that means, doing it regularly, doing it in in regular intervals. The next part is being persistent, and that means staying consistent whether we get results or not. Sometimes we stay consistent, and when we get results, we stop, or we don't see the results, and we stop. But we have to stay persistent in that effort, and then there's the time factor. We get impatient. If I said, listen, in three years, You're going to have the ideal business that you want. Maybe you want to make a million dollars or have a hundred million dollar production business. Maybe you want the man or woman of your dreams. You want a certain amount of passive income, a real estate portfolio. You want to travel. If I said in three years, you're for sure going to have that thing or those things, but you have to do these two or three things over and over and over every single day for three years, but you're for sure going to have it. Would you do it? And everyone's like, yes, of course I would. Well, that's what we're giving up by not staying consistent and persistent over time. We don't know if it's three years or three months or 10 years, but is it worth it? The reason we don't stay consistent and persistent in our activity and in our effort is we don't have the belief. But the only way that you're going to be able to create the belief is to actually go out and do that thing and get those small wins, those incremental wins. When we stack them on a daily basis We allow ourselves to have failures, to have those little losses, but we create confidence. And that confidence isn't a personality trait. It's a skill that we learned because we realize that those little wins that we get along the way, they move the needle much more than those little losses do. And that creates confidence in us and that in turn creates belief and we stick with it. And those wins start to compound and we get bigger wins. And all of a sudden we realize, okay, This isn't about changing my tactics. This is about doing it over and over and over and keeping my mind right. I shared an Instagram story the other day that we've got to understand those daily habits, those daily disciplines, those are the activities. They're not the goals. Our goals are what we want to achieve. We have daily goals, weekly goals, our annual goals, and we have those really, really big goals that I I talk about in, in a North Star. Those goals are what we're trying to achieve. Our daily habits are activity. And a lot of times people will try to create these daily habits and these daily disciplines saying, I want to take an application every single day, or I want to have a one-on-one with a potential referral partner every single day or something like that. And I want you to reframe that in your mind. That's not an activity. That's a goal. We need to be focusing in our habits and our activities about what are the things we need to do to get the application? What are the things we need to do to get that one-on-one? What are the outbound phone calls or DMs or text messages or emails or the number of conversations that we need to start? Those activities yield the results. We also have to think about what's the attraction marketing we're doing? What are we posting on social media? What types of stories and videos? What are the things we're putting out there in the world so that we stay top of mind So that when the outbound activities happen, people are more likely to want to have a conversation with us. People are more likely to think of us when they need something or think of us when they have a referral. That's activity. Those are the habits. We're not going to always achieve our goals. We're not always going to be able to hit that standard or that metric. What we can do is meet the standard of our activity. Those are the things we have control over. M1 and M1 Academy and my coaching company, M1 stands for mindset first. Our mindset controls our attitude and our actions. Those are the only things that we can control. We can't control our partners. 
We can't control the market. We can't control our clients. We can't control the companies we work for. What we can control is what we do and how we respond to things. Those things that we do, those are our habits. Those are our activities. When we're not in a great headspace, when our attitude's not great, if we go take action, we can get ourselves in a good headspace. And a lot of times, if we're not taking action, we can do things to get ourselves in a good headspace so that we want to go take action. Today, for me, my morning routine has been nothing more than me taking action in my daily habits of going to the gym, taking some quiet time, listening to podcasts, fueling my body the right way with water and protein and good food as opposed to junk, pancakes or donuts or bagels or, or some type of a brunch that a lot of times we, we want to do. And, and I'm not advocating that you have to eat perfectly. That's not the point of this. The point of this is that today I'm a product of my habits. Those habits that I took, I got myself in a really good headspace and a great attitude. And that's allowing me to even record this podcast episode, to record some more content after this for YouTube and for, for social media. That's what it's all about. We want to set our goals because if we aim at nothing, we hit it every time. But our goals aren't our activities. Those daily habits, those activities, we've got to frame those and make a list of those and figure out what are those things that we can identify that we're going to do consistently and persistently, if that's the right word, so that we can achieve the goals. A lot of times, we want to focus on other people. We want to focus on our business. We want to focus on things that are outside of us because if we focus on us, then we're quote unquote selfish. But I want to reframe that for you as well. It's okay to be selfish in the context of what it is that you need to do. How do you show up the right way? Most all of our why, the why we do what we do in some way, shape or form is around helping people. That why we help people it, it doesn't mean that we're going to help people dot, dot, dot when it's easy or when we're in the right headspace or when our business is in the right place. It's around helping people regardless of what it looks like in the market, regardless of what our business looks like. So it's okay to focus on yourself and make sure that you're able to do those things to the most potential that you have. If you truly want to help people, now's when people need help. There's confusion about what's going on in the market. There's a lot of difficulty in people's finances. I don't know if I've shared this on the podcast before. This is coming directly from the Social Security Administration. 98% of people cannot financially support themselves at age 65. A third have to depend on the government, which includes Social Security. A third have to continue to work. And a third have to depend on family. People need help. The way that we can help them is to show them how they can achieve their financial goals. And I truly believe that the most approachable way, the most direct way for the average person to create net worth for retirement, to create passive income is through real estate. That's one way that we can help people. Sometimes helping people is just taking them out of the grind of their everyday life and making the content that we put out entertaining or informative. But we have to focus on us first. If we can't take care of ourselves, we can't take care of our clients. So I want to challenge you. Create a list of daily habits, make some of those non-negotiable, and then go out and do everything you can to put yourself in the best position to win. And winning, in the terms that we've defined it, is to help a ton of people. Zig Ziglar says, if we help enough other people get what they want, we'll get what we want. Isn't it more selfish to not do what we're supposed to do because that keeps us from helping as many people as it is to focus on you first and then help a whole lot of other people because you're doing the right things, saying the right things, and in the right headspace that you're going to make an impact on people's lives. I want to talk about a few trends that are a little more tactical, that aren't as much around the headspace mindset side of it. And the low-hanging fruit is obviously social media. Right now, short-form video, those 30 to 45 or 60-second reels and TikToks and YouTube shorts that seem to be blowing up everywhere. There's graphics and there's subtitles and there's really strong hooks that want to grab your attention. And I think because that's been so popular over the last couple of years, some of the things that we're going to see happening in 2024 is people are going to start gravitating to other content mediums, specifically images. Images are what people originally sought after when they went to Instagram and even Facebook in a lot of cases. 
Posting pictures, posting infographics, posting images are going to start getting a lot of traction just because of the oversaturation of short form content and short form video. Now, don't make the mistake of thinking you're hearing me say to stop doing short form content because that's definitely not the case. This conversation is about and, not or. I'm not saying post images and graphics and infographics as opposed to videos. I'm saying we need to do both. If you want to create more engagement, you've got to give people a variety of content. If you're doing video, instead of doing talking head type videos where you're just talking into the camera, maybe get one where you're talking to someone on a video call and get the profile side or take a video of you speaking to a group of people. But also add images, add in pictures, and with those pictures, with those images and graphics, write post copy. On almost every social media platform, specifically Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and YouTube, you can create really long descriptions. That post copy, people will read. Whenever you see just the beginning of it, those first couple of lines, if someone clicks more to read the rest of the post, The algorithm is going to give you a lot of, quote, points for that and show your content to a lot more people. Now, another trend is when people swipe. If you think about Instagram specifically, you only see one image and you have to swipe to get to see the other images. That's called a carousel. Carousels are extremely popular right now and the algorithm loves it because not only do people swipe, but they read the content and they stay on that post longer, which again is going to show it to more people. So one of the trends around social media is, yes, we need to be doing video and a lot of video, but you also need to be adding images. Now, a part B to that is think about adding in long form video, TikTok, Instagram, and even Facebook, YouTube shorts. They're increasing the length of their short form content to show more longer form content, record longer videos. It's also a higher trust audience meaning as opposed to fighting for a few seconds, even 15, 20, 30 seconds, if people engage longer, your content's going to be seen more. It's going to show it to more people. You get credit for that in the algorithm. So you've got to make sure that you're also adding in things where you can explain things to people. You're still going to have to have a strong opening, a strong hook to get people drawn in. But if it's good content and subject matter that people want to pay attention to, you want to go ahead and do a longer video. We know that short form video content is specifically designed to pique people's interest and get them to reach out to you, but sometimes people aren't ready to reach out or they just want more. That's why YouTube has been such a powerful platform, but a lot of YouTube videos with the most engagement are five to seven, maybe 10 minutes long or even longer. So you want to find a middle ground. What are some two or three minute videos where you give people more information than you would a normal reel or TikTok? but you're also allowing people to engage for a period of time that's comfortable for them. They may not want to spend 10 or 15 minutes watching a video, but they may want more than just a few seconds. Another thing to pay attention to, as we said a second ago, is text, is post copy. Written content is still extremely important. You can do articles on LinkedIn. You could do a blog, but you can also just create longer form posts. They allow up to about 5,000 characters, which is several hundred words. And the average blog post is around 800 to 1,000 words. So you could do many blogs in your social media content, especially when you clearly identify if that audience is interested. Most audiences are looking for written content because they can't always turn the sound on when they're consuming social media. That's why subtitles on your videos are so important. But if you're also wanting to reach an older demographic, Like baby boomers, for example, that group is more prone to want to read content. We focus a lot on millennials because there's over 50 million, but there's still a large number of Gen Xers and baby boomers that want to read content. Even Gen Z is interested in reading content a lot of times. So don't miss that type of content in your mix. There's three main types. There's pictures and video. There's written content, and then there's audio content, just like this podcast. Not saying everyone should start a podcast, but that also is something that you might consider. Regardless of what your content mix is, you've got to have a variety. You've got to engage people in different ways, and then continue to stay consistent, as we talked about earlier, so that you can see what's going to get results for you over time. Now, the best way to determine what's the right content for me, 
What's the right place to post it? You want to go through that three-step marketing formula that I've shared before. I share in almost every single one of my talks. It's very simple, and here it is. The first step to the marketing formula is who is your ideal audience? Who's your target market? Who is the group of people that you're trying to reach? And you want to get very specific. If your target is first-time homebuyers, you've got to go deeper and say, okay, is that older millennials and maybe younger Gen X? Or is that younger millennials and older Gen Z? The reason we have to get specific about the geographic location and the age group and what their behavior is, is because we want to understand how can we reach them? What does their life look like? Because the number two in the marketing formula is what problem do we solve for them? Another way to say that's what's the value and messaging that we're going to be providing that audience. And if you are working with older millennials versus younger millennials, they're at two different places in life. Millennials are somewhere between 26 and 41. Well, people in their 20s may not be married yet. They may not have kids yet. They may not even have their ideal career yet, where people that are in their mid to late 30s are probably a little further along in some of those life events. They're going to have different messages that they're going to respond to, and there's different ways of providing value and solving problems for them. And then the third step of the marketing formula is where. Where's the most effective medium? What's the most effective place to deliver this solution and value to that audience? That could be on, quote, social media, but you might want to pick specific social media platforms. If you're wanting to reach baby boomers, maybe you're going to focus on helping them buy second homes or investment properties or downsize, or your focus is on reverse mortgages. That group of people in terms of, quote, social media is probably only Facebook. 55 and up is the fastest growing demographic on Facebook, where if you're looking to help people early in life create wealth with real estate or to help them achieve their financial goals, that's probably going to be Gen Z and younger millennials. They're going to be on Instagram and potentially TikTok, and they may not be on Facebook at all. That's why it's very important to use this marketing formula. So those three steps again, who's your ideal audience or target market? Number two, what problem do you solve and what's the value that you can provide them, the messaging that you're giving? And number three, what's the most effective place to provide that solution and value to that audience? It can also be in-person events. It could be in-person one-on-one. It could be through email. It doesn't have to be social media, but the point is on every single one of those steps, you want to get very, very specific. If you'd like to have some resources that can help you walk through that marketing formula, that can help you create that ideal audience and understand the best tactical ways on social media to deliver that message and solution, at the bottom of the show notes, there's going to be a link and a phone number for our text community. It's 214-225-5696. Just shoot me a text. That's our M1 Academy text community. I answer those directly. We're not going to blast you or spam you with a bunch of text messages. I send out a couple every week. There are some mindset and habit tips, but you're also able to communicate directly with me, not just inside of a group. It allows me to send text messages to a large number of people, but also interact with you one-on-one. So shoot me a text message and just say, hey, I'd like to have some of the marketing formula resources that you mentioned on your podcast. I will email those over to you. You can take a look at them. It'll help you in your journey. That's totally free. But I want you to remember the way to get to where you want to go is to make a decision that you're going to do what it takes. That gap from where you are and where you want to be is a decision. And that first decision is to make sure you understand who it is you're trying to reach, how you're going to reach them, and what that message is. As we close out, I want to share a couple of quick things. The first is until January 31st, we're doing a special for M1 Academy for our performance group coaching program. Now, the performance group coaching program is a 12-month program. We do bi-weekly group coaching calls. Uh, they're, they're one hour every other week. There's 60 minutes on Zoom. It's led by me. It's got our entire M1 Academy community on there. We do quarterly workshops, and those workshops are on the core four pillars of M1 Academy, which are mindset, habits, message, and vision. It's all the mindset, the tactics, the planning, the really carving out your unique value offer. We do those quarterly workshops. There's a ton of resources. We have an M1 Academy online portal 
that has all of our prior group calls. There's a group call archive, hundreds of hours of videos. It's got all of our resources in all of those four categories. And it's also got an accelerator video series. It's 10 foundational videos to help you jumpstart your growth. You're also going to get an action planning workbook. You're going to get access to our community, which is uh, all of our members online and, and through our f- private Facebook group, as well as those resources. And then we do send some accountability text messages as well. We're doing a special on that. It's $500 off our annual price. So instead of $24.97, it's just $19.97. And then we also have a three payment plan. So it's $897, $897 uh, three times, and there's 60 days in between there. We are running a little bit of a special on that as well, but the, the most savings is that $500 off the, the one payment plan, uh, and it is a 12-month program. So I'd love you to be part of that as well. And then lastly, I'm going to be speaking at the Momentum Builder event in Las Vegas. Now, I spoke there last year. I even uh, released that talk on this podcast. Don and Gina with DG Media do an incredible job. It's one of my favorite events throughout the year. I'm going to be speaking at the very beginning with some speakers that uh, were on stage last year for kind of a TED Talk style event at the very beginning. I have a code. I'm going to put it in the show notes where you can get an additional $100 off the ticket. Now, anyone who joins M1 Academy, either at the event or prior to, I'm doing a special dinner. We're going to bring in a special guest for all of our M1 Academy members that are present for the event, and it's going to be an incredible mastermind event. I'm going to pick up the tab. We'll do some dinner and drinks. It's going to be an incredible time. I promise you, you're not going to want to miss it. I'm not going to announce the special guest just yet, but I'm telling you to have one-on-one access with this person is going to be incredible. So go to MomentumBuilder.com. You can use the promo code M1 Academy or the promo code Treadwell, just my last name, and it will get you an additional $100 off uh, the lowest price that they have on there. Guys, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for listening. If you're getting anything out of our podcast episodes, I would love it if you would go and leave us a review on Apple or Spotify or wherever you listen. I'd love to have a five-star review. Just tell us how we're doing. And if there's anything that I can do for you specifically, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can reach out to me on Instagram at Phil Trudwell or on our Mortgage Marketing Expert podcast page. You can join our text community. That link is also in the show notes. But I appreciate you. I hope you have an incredible 2024. It's going to be a big year. And I look forward to catching up again with you very soon. Thank you for joining us. This is the Mortgage Marketing Expert Podcast.